Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the inaugural Interop Summit. Uh, we're really excited to have over 300 people who've signed up for the event, and I want to thank you on behalf of the three of us for coming today. So we hope you find this a rewarding educational event, and our lecturers have worked very, very hard to prepare content instead of learning objectives which are CPD approved. So our aim is that everyone goes away from today with a common language for understanding and speaking about interoperability. And some of this content may be familiar to you already. However, we hope that by explaining these principles to everyone here in an approachable manner, you'll be able to share them with colleagues to spread this knowledge. So please remember, we've invited lecturers as professionals in their own rights. And so their views don't necessarily represent the organizations they work for. We'll be recording all lectures and placing those videos online so you can revisit them and share them with your colleagues. The videos will focus on the speakers, but may include some wider shots of the room. So if you'd prefer not to be recorded, we'd ask that you sit in our overflow room at the other end of the floor called Aladdin Sane. So apologies to those of you who we sat in the overflow room originally. We think we've managed to get you all in here. Um, and to any late arrivals that are coming in now, you're welcome to join us after the break. Um, just because of the number of people that we've got here today, we've decided to take questions through an online tool. So what I'd ask you to do is to visit the link on screen, bit.do slash interop, where you can place questions throughout the event, which we can collate in the panel sessions tomorrow, and in the talk, how should an effective interoperability standards development process work in the NHS? So before I hand over to my colleagues, just a couple of bits of housekeeping. Toilets are just around the back of this screen. When you go out this door, take a sharp right. There's no fire drills planned for today. So if there are any fire alarms, they're real. Please follow the directions from the ushers and any of us wearing t-shirts. We'll go downstairs and then follow the people with Google lollipops over towards our fire safety area. Um, there'll be a number of breaks as outlined on the schedule. And we'd ask that you return from those breaks promptly because we've got quite a packed session. And lastly, for any of you that are thinking of tweeting, our hashtag is Interop Summit. So I hope you all have a great day, and I'm going to introduce you to my colleague, Wai Kiong. Uh, sorry, my colleague, Amir Mekar. <laughs> all right, so thank you, Kian. Um, my name is Amir Mekar. I'm a GP, and I'm the CCO for Orion Health. And we are super, super excited to have you here today. This has been a project that's been five months in the making. So many of you who know me know that I'm a massive advocate of mindfulness and meditation. And every day, I down my tools, switch off my thinking brain, and just try and reconnect with who I am and my core values and beliefs. And yesterday, after my meditation session, I was thinking what I might say to you all today. Two words kept bouncing around in my head. People and culture. You see, behind all the organizations and partners that have helped make today possible are individual people who we believe share the same values and beliefs and culture of openness and transparency and collaboration. Openness, transparency and collaboration. You see, those cultural values don't just exist in their organizations, but they extend beyond them. We believe that information silos should no longer exist. We don't want information silos between our, in, ourselves as individuals or between organizations. So I put it to you all today that the people behind these organizations are really Robin Hoods of information sharing. All of you here today and all those people behind those organizations believe in the Robin Hood principle of information sharing, to take from the information rich and to give to the information poor to improve the ability of our care professionals, OTs, nurses, doctors, physios, social workers, to improve the life of our patients at the front line. When you're unwell, you will want your care professionals to have access to information fast. Interoperability is no longer a technical discourse, but is all about patient safety and do no harm. Over the next two days, you will hear about Interopen. This is a collaborative organization of individuals, providers, vendors, and standards bodies that have come together to say that they believe in a culture of transparency, 
of openness, of putting commercial interests aside to design interoperability standards to create new models of care for our NHS, for our social care system. They have publicly declared and put their organisational names in the belief to create a set of national standards so that we can actually lift ourselves out of our silos and actually create those new models that we all want. We have already started on working together to create a set of national information standards called in FIRE, which you will hear more about later today, which can be considered like the legal building blocks of clinical content, medications, allergies, pro problem lists, problems. And what we want to do is work together to make these a national set of standards so vendor organizations can sign up to those and make it easy for other SMEs or provider groups or individuals who want to write excellent software and provide cool services for our NHS to build together and not be trapped be able to access that market. So, coming back to my thoughts of last night, I like to do live tweets. There are over 200 people here today, and many more people watch these videos online. We really believe that this network can come together to create a culture of openness that we can actually deliver these new models of care. So I'd love for you to show support to this by going to our Twitter, and I'm going to do a live tweet that says, time to create a truly open community to learn together, share together, change health and social care together because data saves lives. Thank you very much. Thank, thanks, Amir. It's great to see so many friendly and familiar faces, and I also look forward over the next two days to make more friends. Um, I'm Wai Kiong. I'm a consultant haematologist at University College London Hospitals, just down the road. And I just wanted to tell you a little bit of a story on how this education summit came about. Um, I was working on the Walter Review about this time last year, and as part of my research, I spoke to Nick Booth, who is somewhere in the audience here, and he shared an observation with me. He said to me, if you take a doctor, a nurse, a pharmacist, train in the UK, and you teleport them to any other uh, award round in any other English-speaking country, immediately they have a common language to speak. They, everyone knows what's happening to the patient. Everyone knows the patient management plan, and more importantly, everyone knows what their role is to help make that patient better. This is because from university, from postgraduate education, they've all learned a common language to communicate. Now, imagine a meeting that you've had recently where you're trying to discuss healthcare data interoperability, where you have a clinician, non-clinician, uh, project managers, and IT. And what you have in those meetings is six people in the meeting, and when they come out of the meeting, they have six different versions of the truth. Now, how are we ever going to interoperate if we don't even speak a common language? That observation has stuck in my mind in April of last year, and I just couldn't let go of it. And so, in, that was April last year. In August, I met Amir. In September, I met Kian and the DeepMind team, and we thought we needed to do something about it. And this is what we have created with amazing help for lots of trusted friends and partners. So, I would like to welcome you for the next two days, where it will feel a little bit like going back to university, right? And that's our intention. And we're going to cram a year's worth of health informatics and interoperability into two days. OK? That's, that's entirely our aim. So on that note, um, I would like to uh, welcome um, Professor Robert Walker, who, as you know, is the author of Making IT Work a Report, which has been very influential. He's also the, um, he is a medic. Uh, he is the professor of medicine in UCSF, well-known author and world-renowned patient safety expert. And um, he's going to say a few words for us. <laughs> 